Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. That's right, Lakeisha. <laughs> and spoiler alert: If you didn't see Power this week, sorry, we got to talk about it's it. It's over. Man. Well, you know, it's okay because Notori posted. That everybody, yeah, did. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, so. it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. You how died. Did it, how did it feel to die? And even, be, even before the episode, they were giving that warning, like someone prominent is going to die in this episode. Right, right. So. It was it was a moment. It was a moment. It's definitely not easy to watch yourself mm-hmm. get a bullet to your head. Lord, That's not the easiest thing to watch. Yeah. And also, you know, for some people, it's just like, oh, Keisha died. For me, that means it's the end of my job. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it is I'm the end of the, again. No, I'm it's not, the end I'm of the series saying, anyway. It's the end of the, Well, I mean, there's spinoffs and stuff like right. that that's happening, but... At the end of the day, you know, Power, I was on there from season one, episode one, six seasons. So that was a big part of my life, you know. Um, But all good things have to come to an end at some point. And it made sense in the story. And my thing is, if you're going to leave a show, you want to leave a show with a bang, literally. Not a bang to the head, though. Brain splattered on the floor. Goodness gracious. But you want people to talk about it. You don't just want to, like... Disappear and nobody cares about it. Like I feel like this is a moment that people always talk about. Well, is your son watching now? No, before you said your son doesn't watch it. He's not allowed to watch Power, but I did let him watch this episode. That's That's traumatizing. Why would you do that? Every episode, you let him. I kept saying, "Mom, all my friends said you get killed this episode. I want to watch it. I want to watch it." So I let him and his two friends watch it, and they were like, "Oh, this is crazy." Really crazy. I looked at his face, and he it it was a moment for him. He was like, "Mom, that that was intense." Is he jealous that you have a whole other son on there? (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, he's always like, that's not your son. But you know, when we would film Power, I would FaceTime him and let him talk to, the actor's name is Denim, but he plays Cash on Power, and they would talk to each other just because, you know, I don't want Kiana to get jealous or anything. <laughs> who was the you first cry? person who told you Lakeisha's character was dying? Who who delivered that news? So it was, it was Courtney, our creator, Courtney Kemp at 50. You know, they sat me down and talked me through it and explained, you know, why it makes sense for the show and this season of Power is coming to an end. And I understood it, you know. It's it's a show that people die. You just never know when mm-hmm. it's going to be your chance. And to be honest, Lakeisha lasted a long time. That character was never supposed to be that big or, mm-hmm. or grow to that. That character was just supposed to be on the sidelines. So to see where Lakeisha started and where she ended, um, it's just a testament to the fans who fell in love with her, the fans who hated her, mm-hmm. the fans who just wanted to see more. So I'm so appreciative of that. Mm-hmm. Did you cry after that last scene, that last shot? I was emotional the day I did it. You got to remember, we shot that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I've I've already dealt with all the emotions. Mm -hmm. For me, like, just seeing all the tweets and Instagram about how people love the character and even people that hated the character, just like, we love what you brought to that role. We Mm -hmm. love your growth as an actress. That's what really meant the world to me. And just seeing all the memes and everybody going crazy over it, we really made a major moment for television. And that's something that I'm proud of. I hated it. And the reason I hated it is because I feel like Tommy deserves better. I hate all the black characters on Power. I so saw much. what you tweeted. I'm serious. I, that's the what did only, you tweet though? What exactly? I said this is the Power's the only show that makes me not root for everybody black. I find myself rooting for the white guy. I don't know. Didn't Tommy kill his ex girlfriend and his own yeah, dad? Who cares? Exactly. Who cares? I mean, I don't know if that makes him a he really the, great he guy. Loved, he loved the Afro Latino. <laughs> he killed his white girlfriend. No, Lala, Lala, let's talk about what's you what's though. <laughs> In real life, right? Because Lakeisha was so ride or die. In real life, if you were in that position, right? What do you think you would have done? Would you have, because obviously child services was about to take your son, right, right, right. But this is the man that you love, and then you're also scared of him mm-hmm. because he could kill you. In real life, what does one do? Is Lala well, ride or die? Yeah, no, I'm ride or die. Yeah, I've known <laughs> me since when I was a teenager. You know, I'm ride or die, but nothing comes before my son. Word. Nothing. There's no man. There's no dick game there's nothing coming before my kid so you're snitching if it's for my kid i'm, I'm telling okay. everything i'm do telling you, on all of y'all, all of y'all. <laughs> on all of y'all do you channel your real life uh motherly nature when you're doing these scenes do you think of cayenne yeah definitely like in some of the scenes talking to cash cayenne's like when he watched it he's like ma that's exactly how you talked to me when i was like put your seatbelt on sit up i just mm-hmm. think like the same way i would talk to my own son you mm-hmm. know so i would just 
put Cayenne in that place and speak to Cash the way I would talk to Cayenne. I was sure. upset because Cash told, like you told him specifically, I don't know. tell But kids anyone. tell everything. You know you can't say or do anything <laughs> around kids. They <laughs> tell everything. They will tell all your business. Yeah, you specifically said it. The first thing he did was... I know, was, was tell. <laughs> was tell. How do you balance that? How do you balance your life and everything that you're doing and then on Friday nights I still see you at the basketball games? Like, How do you balance that? <laughs> um... I only have one kid. I'm not like you with a hundred kids right now. I got I one. Got five. Okay. Okay. You got five. You got a lot. Five is a hundred. But you shoot in Atlanta. But then you, you know, yeah. You're but you know, Atlanta, one Atlanta is City. one. I could juggle. One I could juggle. Cayenne travels with me a lot, and I always make time for what's important to him, which is school and basketball. He's mm-hmm. killing it in basketball, so I want to be present for him. I want him to feel like my mom was there. She was a part of it. Not right. like you know, I never saw my mom. And the great thing about the job I do. I could bring him to work sometimes. He mm-hmm. could see what the set is like and experience that. So I always try to make a way where he's involved in what I'm doing and I'm always there for what he's doing. Does he like it, though? Does he like it how famous his mommy is when people want to take pictures? Or is he like, come on, mom? Yeah, he's kind of like, come on. I don't think it, it phases him that much. He still tells me I can't come into school when it's time to pick him up. I got to really? wait outside. <laughs> and then what else did he tell? Oh, he doesn't like taking pictures with me anymore, he said. He's not into taking pictures now. And you also said Halloween's coming up. I was like, what do you want to be for Halloween? He's not into Halloween anymore. Okay. He doesn't so like the way you dress too, though, right? He doesn't. He, he just be like, Scantily Ma, that, clad. Ma, that's what, you wear, <laughs> that's what you're wearing today? He'll say that. You don't but pick he him up like that, say, though. No, I don't pick him up like that. <laughs> come on, Ma, come no, I don't on, pick Ma. him up like that. But he does not want me anywhere near that school. He's like, can you wait down the block? I'm like, do you not know your mom is cool? Like, I'm a cool mom. He doesn't He doesn't care about that. Now, was this after the La La's Tata's episode, maybe? <laughs> Maybe the little boys in the it school saw been, a little too much. Been. No, he tells me. He's like, <laughs> my it? friend said you had a kissing scene. Or my friend said wow. they saw you doing something on TV. And I said, doing what? He's like, you know what I'm talking about. Wow. Like, he, <laughs> he says that. But he's not allowed to watch Power. But it's crazy because all his friends, he's 12 years old, they all watch Power. You don't think he right? watches it when you're not around? He Googled it. I don't, I, maybe, maybe. He's definitely watched it. Let's maybe, be clear. Maybe, maybe. Would you let a 12-year-old watch Power? No. Nah. No. My daughter's 11. I make her lead the room. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but nah, they nah, can nah, still, nah. I feel like they have so much access to Yeah, they everything. have access, but you're not going to be watching it on my watch. Right. Yeah, last night, iPad, dude was jacking like... off watching. <laughs> right. No. Oh, by the way, he saw that and I was like, shit, I should turn it off. <laughs> he was like, he was like, mom, what's going on? Like, <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> like, what video game is that? <laughs> Did he win? <laughs> Oh my god! So you had to explain that. I I, I just I just kept, I just went past that. I, I was so mad about the episode last night that I watched Power Confidential, and I never watch Power Confidential. You don't? Why? Yeah, well, shout I'm out just to because I, 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 I usually watch it late. I usually watch Power late, so I just don't mm. stay up for the Power Confidential. But I did watch it last night. They said just the death was based off of a suicide. So in the 1920s, this woman jumped off the Empire State Building and fell on a car. She committed suicide, and it's called a beautiful suicide because the way she landed. She still looks so beautiful. People thought it was a photo shoot. They didn't even realize that she was dead. And so the director, Bart, of this episode was like, you know, I want your death to still be beautiful. So even though my brains got blown out, the kind of way I was still like laying there and when Joe's character, Tommy, walks in and sees me, it's based on that photo, which is called A Beautiful Suicide. You got you. So yeah. next up, you're on The Shy. The Shy. Shout out to Lena and you the crew You're definitely getting killed there. on that, too. <laughs> That's going to be the thing for a while. They're going to start killing you. Don't say that. <laughs> I need this bread. Don't say that. Yes, yeah, so The Shy. So I started filming that, season three. I'm um, having a great time in Chicago with um, Jacob Lattimore and the crew over there. Lena's amazing. The writing on the show is amazing. It's interesting because... Being on power for six years and now switching over to the shy, I have to switch my mindset. It's a new character. It's a new environment. There's a character on the shy named Keisha. Mm-hmm. So I was telling my <laughs> makeup artists and hairstyles, I'll read the script and my mind wow. just goes to Keisha. And right. I'm like, oh, no, you're not Keisha in this. You're Dom. My character's name is Dom. Mm-hmm. So be on the lookout for that. Season three, we're actually filming now. I go back out to Chicago tomorrow. What's your character? So I am. I run like a local hood kind of ch- chicken spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so Jacob comes to me saying we need to be in business together and him and I try to do this late night kind of chicken spot together and obviously all kind of stuff transpires. Are you upset? I mean, are, are you scared that people in Chicago be like, she's not from Chicago? Um, Maybe a little bit, but I even that character, I don't think I'm trying to necessarily be from Chicago. Mm-hmm. You could be in Chicago and not be from there. Mm-hmm. I think I posted a picture from my trailer and I had like a vintage like FUBU pants on and it was like nobody in Chicago wears FUBU <laughs> I was like 
my nigga, I'm from New York. Like <laughs> nobody this, in New York wears fubu. But well, it was vintage. Okay, no, okay. thank I'm you. Sorry, it was vintage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm <laughs> like, that was me, Lala. Like I'm New York all day. Right. I'm, that's never gonna change. Mm -hmm. Oh, they thought that was the character. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's gotcha, my real gotcha, clothes. Gotcha, that's gotcha, me. Gotcha. What happened to that bartender uh, documentary or movie or flick that you were doing? It was. It was a lot of. It was a lot of moving parts with that, and it the still has. The girls got on your mind. The girls got on your. It was bothering you. It was too much stress. I won't say they were bothering me. It was just a lot going on with certain girls that was gotcha. just bringing so much. Not all of them. I mean, you know, shout out to Bernice was gonna be a part of it. Love her, but with certain girls, it was just a lot going on, and I was like, you know, I got to be real careful with what I'm aligning myself with and the energy I'm putting out there. Mm -hmm. um, so you never know. Maybe it'll come back around, but I'm working on a lot of... You got another show with 50, too, right? Yeah, so 50 and I are producing a show on Stars called Intercepted, mm -hmm. which I'm excited about. We're really moving fast on that, and it's just the behind-the-scenes of... It takes place in the NFL, but the behind-the-scenes stuff that really happens that nobody ever talks about. Like, mm -hmm. you think you know what goes on behind the scenes until you really live it. Obviously, I lived it. Mine was NBA, but this is NFL. Um, and the real stories of, like, you know, the agents, the women, all the all the crazy shit that happens. So we're excited for that. It's called Intercepted, and it's going to be on Stars as well. Why not do the NBA? I know you got stars. Because, <laughs> because the NBA, I was like, it's too close to me. It's like, oh, as everything I do is going to say, gonna oh, like, that happened to her. That happened to her, or, oh, Melo must have did that gotcha. to her. So at they're gonna least do it the same way they're anyway. still going to do it, but mm -hmm. NFL, it, it kind of mix it up. And all the stories are not my own stories. I mm -hmm. mean, I have stories from tons of athletes, tons of women. We all got stories. I mean, you don't have to be in it to have stories. Give us like an it. example of a story. Um example of a story, I would say like okay, so well, I'll tell you what the, it kind of opens up as. This this woman is is married to this player and she ends up having a one night stand cuz she feels like she's ignored by him mm -hmm. and he's not paying her any attention and this in this world, athletes are focused on what they're focused on. A lot of times a woman feel neglected mm -hmm. or like they're not being paid attention to. So she has a one night stand and about 6 months later, a new quarterback comes on the team and she doesn't re she realizes that's the guy she had the one night Damn. stand with. <laughs> so now he's in in their circle and how do you deal with that? I'm not saying I don't know a story where that particularly right. happened, but I'm just saying those kind of Should stories. Should she tell in that situation? That's what the, that's what it's all Hell about. No. How do you deal with that? Don't tell oh no, nah, my oh, mom no says you better take everything to the grave. Don't <laughs> tell nothing. Don't tell nothing. I ain't telling nothing. Do you, do you approach that new quarterback and say, "Look, I know what happened." Nope. Or do you no, just not, you don't know him no more. He not gonna say he nothing. Gonna say you guys talk. Y'all do talk more than girls, by nope, the way. Not true. You not yeah, a talker. Guys definitely nah. do, especially in the locker room. Never. Envy you a talker. Nope. Okay. He'll be right up in that last Especially line. Especially when you like, get grown. And you know how much worse it is? Wouldn't you rather hear that from your girl than from the guy? Like, wouldn't you rather she tell you? But guys are different. I don't. Guys are not as forgiving. If if your wife told you she cheated on you, that's a whole nother story. You now, tell her you cheated on her. You want her to forgive you. Yes. You want her to get over it. Let her tell you she cheated on you and what would happen. She, cheated, she, on, she cheated on me in college when we've been together no, 23 years. No, but since you've been married. Oh, no, no, that's a wrap. That's what I'm saying. I'm Let's say she went out with Envy. <laughs> uh, I'm right. <laughs> what? what happened but Wait, why? But wait, can we talk? Let's see. I'm going to interview you. You always uh -oh, want to interview everybody else. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go. I'm just as good as this as you are. I know. Okay, so why is it that women are mm. supposed to forgive mm. and be okay with it, and men are supposed to just be able to do whatever they fuck they want to do, and we're supposed to just yeah. take it? Well, no, I don't think that women should be okay with it, but I think that if you really love somebody, you'll be willing to forgive but them. But you won't forgive your wife if she cheated on you, and you really Only love because I'm really clean now. Mm -hmm. I've been clean. Oh, for, I've been clean, clean for three years. Hashtag black years. men don't cheat. And exactly. Now, it's been clean. I've been clean for three years. Three? Yes. They, they've been together. Since October of 2016. Now, mind you, last week he said four years. This I was week. wrong. It was three, it's, three, it's three now. And you know the month? That you know I told Last time I got some other phone from was October 2016. And she obviously knows about that. Yes, she does. <laughs> That is you know fact. what though you're right though because I think a lot of times people look at the women like you did something wrong if you don't of forgive of course and, and the woman we're not given the same like flexibility as a man if you hear a woman is married and she slept around all of a sudden she's a hoe she's a thought she's this when a man does it it's like oh well that's expected right you know like, you women know what don't you get signed yeah. up for because y'all don't, don't just the fuck y'all be all into the person and talking to them on the phone y'all get emotionally connected to people <laughs> men cheat for ego women cheat for emo that's Sometimes the difference women cheat for that's ego. what he told okay. himself that's what is he told that what he said that's the truth Go. Say that, that line one more time. Men, Men cheat. cheat for ego. Women cheat for emo. But that's not true. Like you were just saying, this the story you told us about the NFL player right. and, and his wife. She felt like she was being neglected. I'm mm -hmm. sure he was doing that. Her ego that's emotions. was probably like, I want to feel like I want to feel like I matter to somebody. Emotions. That's ego Guys too. don't care. We put it in, nut, and keep it moving. Not always. 
What do you mean? Because guys do end up getting with their side chick. Yeah, if you fuck them raw and fuck more than three times. You know, I can't. Wait, so it's got to be raw and it's got to be more than three times? No, if yeah, if you have sex with a girl unprotected and you do it more than three times, you're in a relationship. Absolutely. You're in a relationship. He does weird stuff. And how do you tell if they got an STD or something? Ooh. That's old. The ear wax test. What was that? When you put a little, you dig in your ear and you put the wax on your, in your finger and you stick it in her. And if she jumps, that means she got something. And you shouldn't be dating a guy with air wax if coming out his ear. Everybody got air wax. If y'all can see everybody's face in this room right now, they like. So you got some weird rules. But by the way, everybody gonna go home and be like. That's right. Change <laughs> them. If you got chlamydia, try it on yourself right now. I bet you it'll work. <laughs> Speaking of the NBA, do you think Carmelo's being blackballed? Um, woof, that was a quick. I know. We just went from air um, wax to blackball. <laughs> I don't think he's being blackballed. I don't think it's blackball, but I do think that it's really a crazy situation and unfair that, you know, he's not in, in the NBA. He still is one of the top players in the NBA. No I mean, team picked him up, but that's not blackball? Not one? The worst team in the NBA one. didn't even say, you know what, we can use Melo? You have a point. I'm thinking about it. But I, blackball to me is like, I still think there's a chance. So maybe that's mm -hmm. why I say not blackball. The USA I still team think said no, and they lost. Yeah, they did. They did. But I don't, I, I, yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. I ask people about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I try to figure out the rhyme or reason behind it. And it just, I can't come up with anything. I just hope that before the season starts or in the beginning of the season, the team sees a need for him and, and comes through because he wants to play basketball. He's still definitely in shape and, and ready to play basketball. So to see him not in the league, it doesn't even feel right. Strange. Yeah. To watch everybody in China or see the pictures from media day and he's not a part of that, that shit don't feel right. How do you explain that to Cayenne? Cause I know he asked. He asked a lot. He has a tough time with it. You know, mm -hmm. kids at school and parents mm -hmm. say things. And we just say that hopefully something's going to give. And if not, you know, at the end of the day, no one can take, a, take away the run that his dad has. His dad th did things in the NBA that will never be forgotten. Won awards, won ch championships in college. You know, did amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. So his dad's legacy is going to be his legacy regardless, you know. And I always tell Cayenne maybe... You could play like you got a little chip on your shoulder because of what happened to dad That's and, true. and right. let that push you through. So when you get to the NBA, you can say this is for my dad. So he knows he's going to the NBA, right? He thinks he is. I, I mean, don't see why I, not, especially when he hit that growth spurt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nice. his, it's always a chance. But I tell him, too, getting in the NBA is one of the hardest things in the world just because your dad and everyone around you, whether it's Bron or D-Wade or CP, his dad's closest friends, like just because they're in the NBA doesn't mean that's an easy thing. Let's not get it twisted. You're not just getting in because... Your mellow son, you gotta work, and my son does work, but there's always right. more to be done. Would mm -hmm. you want him to go to college or go straight? I want him to go to college. Mello would, Mello would absolutely disagree with me. I don't that. know. Go well, straight there. You go to college, that, get injured. That's what Mel. You Mel can always says. go back and get your degree. I, I would like my son to experience a year or two of college just to have that experience, but nobody seems to agree with me. Yeah, but then now it, it, it'll all work out because you'll be in Hollywood. And then Cayenne can go play in California. Then he can get paid <laughs> off his likeness, you know, because they just passed that law. He'll be fine. It'll be good. You think the Knicks did, did Melo dirty? I think, I, I mean, we had a great time when Mel was at the Knicks, but I think that the Knicks could have brought him in and let him end it the right way in Correct. New York, whether it's one or two more seasons. I think that would have been great for New York. And to me, it's all about ticket sales and generating money. You would have generated so much With money, yep. so much money by doing mm -hmm. that. And Mel is such a mentor to a lot of these young players. I don't see how it could have been a bad thing. So I think that they could have allowed him to end it there and just bring so much excitement back to the city, back to the garden. I think they they dropped the ball on that one. Are you still a Knicks fan now? Or are you coming to the Nets? Um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a basketball fan, so I cheer <laughs> for mm -hmm. players that you know I like, people that we 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 deal with, and I do really want to see. Melo, get back in. I haven't lost all hope yet. Okay. So we'll see what happens. When, when you do roles like Keisha, do you find yourself really falling for the love interest? Because Tom, I mean, Tom, Joe's a cancer. Right. You're a cancer. Right. It's hard to pretend in those situations, right? Um, It is acting, but you want to find things about the person that you gravitate to because you want it to feel real and, and, and be real. So there's things that Joe and I connect on. I mean, even family. He, he has a wife. You know, we talk about marriage and different things like that. So we connect there. But, yeah, you have to find something you connect mm -hmm. with the person with. But, no, I'm not trying to sleep with him or be with him outside of the show. But is but it we awkward after, have... though? You know, after you just have a scene and then y'all go into the room, is it like, uh, you know, is it a, a it could be feeling? Sex scenes could be awkward. If somebody tells you different, they lying. It could be awkward. <laughs> I mean, you're standing What's awkward there. about him? 
Well, first of all, you most of your clothes are off. Like, you just close off. It's a bunch of people in the room, and you're trying to act like it's just you and that person, mm-hmm. and, and you can feel that. Even on a closed set, a closed set still means there's at least 10 people in the room. Right. It's not closed, closed. So you, you're insinuating that you're having sex with somebody, and then it's like cut, and you're just, like you say, you're just like, okay. And you're thinking about that. your sex faces too, I'm sure. Yeah, you're thinking about a lot of things, <laughs> and then I'm sure with guys, I'm not a guy, but... You trying not to get hard. Get you. I've heard they said it's hard for them to get hard with all those people watching and knowing. It probably that is, but I. <laughs> but you felt is. some. Not on that <laughs> set, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you basically saying Joe was getting hard all the time. Oh man, is that what you saying? I didn't say that. I didn't say that, but I can see how it easily. You can see it. By the way, one a, a while ago, a while ago, and somebody told me this was so wrong. But my acting coach, one of my acting coaches, told me if you do a sex scene and the guy doesn't get hard, you did not do your job. That is true. And I was like, mm. really? But other actors would not agree with that. This was just from an acting coach. Wow. But I always <laughs> laugh at that because you do want to feel like you're doing what you're supposed right. to be doing, right. but at the same time, it's like, and by the way, let us let me just say this because people think this too. You're not really having sex. Mm-hmm. You're not really <laughs> fucking. There's no penetration. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I knew y'all was really. Like, come on, you think you're really going to be you're really going to be doing that. So I just want to clarify that right now because it's some people that still really believe like, nah, they really fucking. They got sure really. dry hump. That was humping though. They got to be a little hump. dry hump. It's, it's like dry humping, but also the way your bodies are positioned, sometimes his body will be lower than mine. So you're dry humping like my thigh. It's you're not like, like you're really hitting me. Whatever works. Right. Okay, whatever works. <laughs> but you know what? I'm you sure, back to the gym right after. I'm <laughs> sure there are <laughs> cases where people have filmed the scene and they end up really having sex. Like I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure there has to be some in the history of Yeah, there has to yeah. be or when people, you know, have these scenes and really end up like Charlamagne said, liking each other or messing mm-hmm. around with each other. Of course, you've heard about that all the time. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie. I mm-hmm. mean, it happens. I always wonder how the Drake video came about. Kiki? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been a Drake fan. Drake's always been a friend of mine, and it was a huge song, and he knows, you know, I was doing my acting thing. It was a chance to play opposite Felicia Rashad. Who wouldn't want that? Cosby right. show. I was like, this is iconic. He's like, yo, you want to be Kiki? I'm like, say no more. To be there with Felicia Rashad was such a moment, and, and I knew that was something like, my son Kyan would love. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a kid, you start doing stuff for your kid. Like, Absolutely. what would they? What mm-hmm. would they like? So, he mommy like, no Drake. And then mo- mommy's Kiki. Mm-hmm. Mommy's Kiki. and Drake facetimes him, and they play Fortnite together and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's a it's a it's a cool vibe. But I thought that was a, a great moment. All right. Do you get upset when people say you can't act? Um, not really. I think you know you got to be worried when people aren't talking. My thing is that I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So if I couldn't do it, then why am I doing it? If you could do it better, then why are you not getting the jobs I'm exactly. getting? Exactly. That's how I look at it. And my thing is, I do it. I put my all into it. I didn't start that way. So it's been a different journey for me, but that doesn't mean I can't do it. And I think people just naturally want to hate because you started differently. Oh, you're not a real actor. You started on the radio. You're this, you're right. that. Like, all right, maybe I didn't come into it like you, but I put the work in and I continue to put the work in. So that doesn't bother me. I'm doing shows with Courtney Kemp, one of the top showrunners in Hollywood. Now I'm on a show with Lena Waithe, who's won major awards and and doing amazing work. Like, Mm -hmm. these people are not just giving me jobs because I'm me. They can hire anyone. Mm -hmm. They're giving me jobs because I go in there and I put the work in and I do what I'm supposed to. Nobody wants to see their show fail, so I'm sure they're not going to just give anyone a job. Of course not. And I also bring a following with me. I've got 10 million followers on Instagram. Like, people watch what I do, and what's the point of having these great shows if nobody's watching them? You want people to watch, so... If you could do it better, you bring your 10 million followers Uh-oh. and come do what I do. <laughs> and if they didn't think you couldn't act, then they wouldn't care about Keisha dying. Exactly. You know why why saying? is that the number one trending thing all day yesterday? Why that is that and cowgirls. So, and, and cowgirls. Why is off. that so talked about? <laughs> <laughs> why is it so talked about? So I don't, And I just think in this day and age with social media, like it's just people just want to hate. They just want to have a reason to mm-hmm. hate. They hate you. They just want to uh, have yeah. a reason mm-hmm. to hate. Sometimes people will talk to me even about Charlamagne, I'm like, but did you really listen to what he was saying or you just want to hate just because? That's just in the nature of people. And I had to stop worrying about that a long time ago. You know, we're so quick to respond to the people that are hating and not respond to the millions of people that are showing you so much love. It's like you want to respond to the one person Mm -hmm. that's saying some foul shit about you and you won't even say thank you to the hundreds that are saying great shit about you. You know, I I had to change my mindset when it came to that. Now, I will clap back and I will. I don't have no problem telling somebody how I feel, but... I appreciate all the love and all the people that do support me because that outweighs the hate by a million. Do you have a dream role right now? Um, 
I'm enjoying my role on the show, and the show I told you, Fifty and I are doing. I'm going to star in that as well, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm into that because I know that world very well. I want to tell those stories in a different way, so that that's a role I'm really excited about. Dream role, I don't know. I'm just paying attention to what's happening now and trying to um get out there because I've been off the scene for six years, not available because of power to do a lot. So now. I'm available to pick up more roles and do more stuff. So I just want to see kind of where it takes me. I see the Lala collection is doing well. It the is clothes, doing well. cosmetic line. Yes. Yeah, so make sure I just launched my, my personal website, lalaanthonycollection.com. The clothes are on there. So make sure you check the website out and go shopping. Do you, des- do you design that stuff or no? Yeah, I definitely design really? it. I definitely design. You got time to design that stuff too? <laughs> yeah, I make time. I mean, on power, you and your trailer for most of the day so you can do mm-hmm. other stuff. Um, so yeah, I make time and it's all women, all shapes, all sizes. I, I cater to every single size out there, which I'm proud of. So definitely check it out when you can. As an actress, we've watched you grow. Just like throughout, from from the VJ to what you're doing now. When you was at Tyler Perry event last week, what did that make you feel? like? I Honestly, and that's what I was saying, I, I've never felt anything like that in my life. To be in a room with people I grew up watching and icons and people I never even thought I would be in the same room with. Mm-hmm. Because I've seen all those people separately, but everyone together like that mm-hmm. and the love that everyone showed it was it was an unreal amazing experience that's one of those things you dream about and you're like i'm really mm-hmm. here you know and i had to take a moment for myself because when you have people like miss debbie allen or mr samuel jackson or miss felicia rashad coming up to you and saying i love what you're doing on power mm-hmm. i love how you're playing this character if they telling me that you think i give a fuck about what some some twitter troll or instagram person say if what? debbie allen is telling me i want to work with you i love what you're doing i don't care what nobody else mm-hmm. ever says to me so i felt a lot of that in that room as well and everyone just celebrating each other mm-hmm. was so much so much love and spike was there um spike has given me opportunities i was in chirac his mm-hmm. movie so it was just it was just it was unreal so shout out to tyler perry for even including me and inviting me to that that's an invite I was happy that I got Word. it. Now, when Junior was killed, you were one of the first to go see his his mom and his family. You know, uh, recently, the, I think the five kids got life in prison. Mm-hmm. Did you reach back out to the family? I talk or, to them all the time. Do you? It's funny because Genesis was supposed to come with me today. She wanted to come up here and see you guys. I think she's still asleep because mm-hmm. I texted. I was like, where are you at? But I think she's asleep. But, yeah, I've always kept in touch. Um, that, that one really hit hard for me, and I didn't want to be a person that just – reached out when it was all going on and then never talked to them again. I brought her to the power premiere and, mm-hmm. you know, she met 50 and everybody and had, you know, a great time. So, yeah, I wanted to stay connected with them. And I think this, there'll never be closure on something like this, but this brings some type of closure for the family that now these guys got life in jail and they can kind of start rebuilding and, and, and moving past that part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. You ever wanted to start documenting your life again? Like how Lala's full court life? You done I, with that? I think I'm done with that. I'm done with giving that much access to everything I do. I mean, reality TV is great, and some people are amazing at it. But for me, I just, I'm past letting people that deep into my life. People start feeling like they just know too much about everything you're doing. And I think for me and my sanity, there's parts of my life that I just have to keep protected. And, and now that my son is getting older, mm-hmm. there's parts of his life I have to keep, you know, protected. Because when he goes out, people recognize him and mm-hmm. he didn't ask for that and I always got to keep an extra eye on him and there's certain things he can't do and he's like well mom why can't I just walk to the store do mm-hmm. stuff like this but it's different for him so I just want to be careful with that type of stuff. Is mm-hmm. he talking to girls on the phone yet and texting? He tells me he's not but I know that he is <laughs> and he asked me like can he go to Dave and Buster's or can he go to the movies so. You let him go? I let him go. Mm-hmm. What if he's wondering about sex from Power and you don't even realize? <laughs> god. Oh my god. <laughs> what <laughs> age do boys start having sex? Not 12. Well, it depends. I was Hopefully getting touched not. on at eight by my cousin's ex-wife. I mean, I look back and I know it was molestation. Though. Okay, but, but that was, but okay. Yes. What about when you... She's talking about consensual. Consensually started Probably having sex. about 16. Okay, so... And then yeah, you start yeah. thinking about when you lost your virginity <gasps> and how old you were, and you're like, ooh, I hope that... <laughs> I know, because in my mind, he wouldn't even be thinking about that, but now, I, I don't he know. He good, he good. He's he he going to be different, though. Yeah. He, nah, but he, he a ball player. <laughs> That's he's not 12 college. now? <laughs> college, college, and, you go and crazy. And 12, 14, he's bro. in the seventh no, grade. No, college. 14? Probably 14. No, college. He's going to be tall, too? Oh, my God. No, yeah. You college. said college? I said college. Nah. So you don't think he would be having sex at high school? Nah. Well, Evie was a late bloomer. That's why oh, he said I was that. a late bloomer. After high school? <laughs> but, 
<laughs> was it nah, like, it was it was high school, senior year, high school. Okay, yeah. That but was a, see, you got to think. Was Mama's lovely. always around. <laughs> that was a little. <laughs> Mama's always around. Mama takes him to everything. He's always next to Mama. Like it's it's kind of it's gonna be kind of hard. She's not with him right now. He's in school you right know, now. You know, y'all can always make time. No, he's in school. <laughs> yeah, Where'd you lose your virginity? I was like eleventh grade. That ain't bad. So like That's 7, true, yeah. 16, 17. Yeah. What about you? You looking like you you was 15, the early one. 15. 15. 15. I did it once and I hated it. And then I didn't do it again for two years. It okay. was one time I was moving to Jersey and I was like, all right, my boyfriend who I've been with for like my little boyfriend from around the corner. <laughs> and he didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. It was a terrible experience. And you was like, I'm not doing this no more. Yeah. I was like, this is terrible. Why do people like this? <laughs> <laughs> now, what if Kyan brings a white woman home once he gets popping in the in the basketball world? You know, my thing is that people should be able to love whoever they want to love. And, I mean, I want to support my son. I don't want to be that mom who's right. like, you can't do this or you can't do that or if you bring this kind of girl because I want, I wouldn't want to, I would not have wanted to be treated like that by anybody I was with, mom mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I want to be understanding and cool, man. Love is love. Like, whoever you fall in love with, that's your choice. You got to live with them. I don't. So as long as the She's person nice makes girl. him happy... I'm good with now, it. Now, Lala, ask Charlamagne the same pictures. question. Just showing what? pictures of how ask white women the same question. If a white man... <laughs> if, 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 if his daughter... daughter, daughter yeah, yeah tell me about that. I don't... Yeah, I would want her to have a black man. You would? Yeah. You, that's what I'm saying. That would I'm be not your, against it right, if she that does. That would be your preference, but yeah, yeah, are you yeah. going to be like, this white man can't come into my house? I need more details. <laughs> well, hopefully need, it's not a man because his kids are very young. I need more details. I can't just say, I can't just make a blanket statement like that. What do you mean? What do you mean he's a I got to know what his parents are like. I got to know, what, you know what, what interests they are. Yeah, it does matter. I need to know a lot. It's a lot of things that go so into that. So do you need to know the same things if it was a black guy? Yes. Okay. But That's fair. But just double mm-hmm. if it's white. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's all. What are you talking about the way white women ate? You want do you want white people to just hate you? What's wrong you with you? You said the way white people ate? What are you saying? talking no, about the saying. way white women ate? Yes. You show Kyanna a picture and say, look, this is a white woman at 45. This is a black woman at 45. This guy's crazy. This is oh. the black woman at 20. See how things didn't change? This you... is the white woman at 20. See how much things changed? La la. We, we it's an investment. <laughs> He's crazy. Don't go down there. I love everybody. <laughs> yes. White, black, in between. I, I love all y'all. Now, what's next for La La? So, yeah, The Shy is what's next. Right? Filming that. So that should be um, coming out in, in the new year and trying to jump on some film projects. I think I'm going to start writing my third book. Hey. A lot has happened. So I definitely want to write my third book. And then the show 50 and I have intercepted. That's going to go really soon. I have a couple film projects that I'm producing as well that should be happening soon that I'm excited about. So yeah, I just I just stay busy. What's Will it be the the love, bu- be another series in the Love Playbook? Um, I, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, so it was Love Playbook, Power Playbook. I'm trying to think, maybe you can help me with this. Like, mm-hmm. what's the third installment of that? So I gotta figure that out. Because I have a lot to write, but I do want it to be like a series. I think the Respect Playbook. Oh, okay. Love, Power, Respect. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I never thought about that. <laughs> All right, that's a good idea. All right. Well, Lala, thank you for joining us. Thank you, us. guys. It's the Love y'all so much. I appreciate it. Thank good you. Good morning.